hydrogen water to terium depleted water and alkaline water have become um, big fads these days and a lot of people are interested in them maybe they're the next best thing for health or maybe they're not but I'm certainly receiving questions about them and and I wanted to take some time and reflect on these types of water and the insights I might be able to contribute to you so you might be able to know your truth about them so um, in order to start the story, it's going to take a minute to kind of get around to the whole thing. Um, so please be patient with me. Um, it starts with understanding that this culture that we live in conditions people to think in certain ways and to um, trust certain types of authority and to derive our beliefs and convictions from a certain type of education. In my experience, I've discovered that as very mind-based, intellectual-based. Um, it's backed by science. It's backed by um, education, the education system. It's backed by people who are smart and seem right. And I've certainly bought into that system and part, been part of it. And there's always been a part of me that um, wanted to follow my heart, which I didn't really understand a couple of decades ago, that that's what I was doing. And I want to explain that now as part of explaining uh, my position on these different types of water. So back a couple of decades ago, I was the chairman of the Long Range Waste Disposal and Recycling Committee in Hingham, Massachusetts. And we took on a project that took two years to work through the bureaucracy to put recycling infrastructure, meaning bins, all around town, at the library, on the street corners, at the ball fields, all the places so we could show a public statement that this town was for real about recycling. And it was a really big undertaking. There was a bunch of us. We worked really hard on it. And when the project was finished, I went to drive around and look at our work. And I felt something that I hadn't experienced before in any kind of business endeavor. And it took me multiple months to figure out what I had experienced. It was um, tear-filled, and it was a breaking of my heart. Like, literally, my heart was broken. And what it was broken about was that I had unwittingly participated in helping people to feel good about having a plastic bottle and thinking that recycling it would make a, make a difference. So when I figured this out, I went back to the next committee meeting, and I asked if anybody would like to start a new project, and the new project would be designed to support people to uh, make a choice other than recycling, make a choice for something that was beyond the plastic bottle. And uh, there was nobody on the committee that wanted to join me in a project like that, so I resigned. And I started a project that was initially called Waterworks and eventually became the Wellness Enterprise. And the early motivation of that was to rid this world of single-use plastic bottles. And the passion that I felt for that was unlike anything that I had experienced before. It was just, it was so drawing. It, it, it made me want to, you know, the equivalent of run through a brick wall. Like I was just so fired up by it. And so I went about pursuing it. And the first thing that I learned about was alkaline water. And what I discovered is that there's two types of alkaline water. The one I'm going to talk about right now is the type made by a machine. In particular, I got involved with the Enagic Corporation and I became a distributor of Kangen machines. And one of the things that I've noticed about life is that when a door is open, things flow and things are easy and things are good. And I ex anticipated giving my career in sales and the way my career had gone and how well I had done and everything that I had participated in, that I would probably sell like 100 Kangen machines monthly and it would support a good income and a good lifestyle. Well, it turns out I sold 11 in a year and I had to take that under advisement. Like, why are my results so poor? And when I opened my mind, or my being, I should say, I'm still... Um, I still have habits of dropping into mind-based thinking, so please forgive me as I, as I go through that and, and, uh, and pick my language carefully while I'm speaking to you. So as I opened myself to receiving different information than just the information that supported my point of view, I met a nutritionist whose close friend had died from being too alkaline, and she educated me about her perspective on the alkaline water industry. And what I came to understand, I had always thought of alkaline water 
um, from a seesaw perspective, right? So I was really out of balance and acidic. So I put alkaline water on the high end of the seesaw and I balanced myself out. And here was this nutritionist saying, if you keep drinking it, you'll go the other way. And alkalosis or becoming too alkaline is actually a threat to your, to your well-being, to your life. And um, she brought that perspective to me. Then I started to meet people who were informed about the energetics of water. I met somebody who um, was in the business of cleaning the plates that are inside those Enagic machines, and he told me he would never drink water that goes through them. I learned that those machines shock water with electricity on these big plates, and that that causes two different streams of water that are artificial. And so I came to understand through interactions with different people that alkaline water as made by those machines is not the natural water that I was looking for. So it didn't fulfill the um, purpose I was looking for, which was to find a story so much better than anything that could come in a plastic bottle that people would give up using single serve bottles. So just a, a quick parenthesis here to close out the alkaline water part of things. So what I'm saying is that alkaline water is a medical grade type water, that it's out of balance, it's not what's found in nature, and that um, there are great testimonials for it that are on the internet because some people are so out of balance on their acid alkaline seesaw that when they even it out, they, they might turn their whole life around from that. So those testimonials are authentic and legitimate, I hope, in most cases, I, I believe they, to, they are. And that doesn't make alkaline water a good thing for me or my loved ones on a long-term basis. And there is one type of alkaline water which is naturally occurring from passing through a lot of mineral content and becoming alkaline by carrying a lot of minerals. And I do think that type of water is safe where it's gravity fed, um, not electrolysis generated. Um, so I would stay away from alkaline water in the sense that alkaline water is water made by a machine like a Kangen machine or the dozens of others that that use electricity to create the two streams of water and the high pH. So that's my experience with alkaline water. So um, getting back to now to opening up the hydrogen water and the deuterium depleted water, I have for the last decade been um, guided by this passion again to follow my, my heart. And my heart has said, pursue water that's as natural as possible. Not, not the health claims, not the smart people's water, but the water that is most beneficial to a, uh, to a sovereign being. And what I've discovered traveling for a decade around this country and around the world is that um, there's water in waterfalls that moves through rocks and underground, going through the hydrological cycle, constantly tumbling and moving over sacred geometry and through vortex spins, and that's natural water. And so I've had the opportunity to stay at a friend's house who had hydrogen water, and I was like, oh, this is great. You know, I get to drink this for four days, and I just drank as much as I could for four days, and, and just nothing for me. Like, I just, I didn't want it. And I asked myself the question, like, where are the arguments coming from that support hydrogen water and, and then deuterium depleted water. And you know, I feel like I would need a PhD that I don't have to be able to understand deuter deuterium depleted water. And as such, I'm not, I'm not in the least bit drawn to it. Like my heart just goes flat when it comes to these two types of water. And I've come to understand that they are made by industry and that they are sold by profit, for profit, and that their arguments are intellectual based. And some people might find those to be heart-based, and you know, if that's you, by all means, experiment with it. But I found something much deeper, um, which is that there is a, um, an infinite and an awe-striking force in life, the force of nature, the force that I've experienced through structured water. And that force compels me to be with devices like the Aqua Energizers, which the Wellness Enterprise manufactures. And, and these devices are made from copper, which, um, which is a type of crystal, and crystals, and they're coated with minerals. They're very simple, and they are flow forms. No electricity, no magnets, no, um, no polarized aspects to them. They're simply a vibration, and a very high vibration at that. 
so um, getting back to what prompted this whole video to come out, I just became aware that there's an article that um, you can find by Googling um, the plastic industry lied. And essentially, it uh, goes, it's been reported uh, for a couple of years now in many places. It's just come to my attention recently. And essentially, it, it shows that the recycling industry was created by the plastics industry, by the oil and gas industry, right? That's the raw material that are inside of plastics. And what they wanted to do was encourage single serve uh, consumption and disposability. And they wanted to make us think that that was eco beneficial, right? That that was going to be good for the earth. And it's not. Um, it's uh, economically unsound, and most of the plastic ends up in the trash bins anyway. And now that China has shut its doors to receiving most types of plastic, there's nowhere for this plastic to go. And so this concept of recycling is going to be coming to some kind of closing energy because it's not achieving what it's promised to do. And, and I find that's what a lot of things are like when they're intellectual arguments. So I'm finding that the, the arguments for hydrogen water and deuterium depleted water are intellectual. They are not heart-based. They are not what I find when I'm in nature. They do not illuminate my body, mind, and spirit when I drink them. And some people are having be health benefits from them. And, you know, I've always been an intuitive and a kinesthetic guy. When I was in the stock market for 18 years, there was a lot going on with derivatives. And I just paid attention to two things, the price and volume of stocks. And I picked stocks based primarily on those two factors. And I had a longer run than most and a better run than most um, doing that with that very simple thing. And people would get involved in things that were much more complicated, and I didn't want anything to do with it. So I'm inviting you to distinguish the difference between finding something that makes sense intellectually and draws you in and finding something that resonates in your heart. And for me, hydrogen water, deuterium depleted water, and alkaline water do not resonate in my heart. And so I choose never to drink those, and I invite you to come to your own conclusion. So thanks for checking in today. I hope this uh, video makes a difference for you, and please leave your comments in the, um, in the, um, underneath the video. And um, I'm going to put a link underneath to an uh, e-book that I wrote a number of years ago called Beyond Alkaline Water. And for those that are on a deep dive in alkaline water, if you want to take a look at really a lot of the journey that led me to the conclusions I shared in this video, That'll be a resource for you. Thank you.